Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella with Jill DeWitt. Hello. Welcome to our show today. In this episode, Jill and I talk about back tax property and the truth. The truth about back tax property entirely. Awesome show today right after Christmas, Jill. For, uh, before we get into all that, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landacademy.com online community. It's free. Okay. Kevin asks, I'm getting some desert properties that are in a subdivision with covenants and restrictions. No mobile homes, even on concrete pads, and home plans must be approved. My offer of $500 for five acres is being accepted. Love it. Do you have any experience with selling this improved, quote unquote, type of desert vacant land? I feel like it would take a very different buyer to respond to these property types. Well, first of all, it's a great question, you know, Mm -hmm. and it reminds of my gut reaction right to this to this question is, you know, we're just all now real comfortable buying property for 500 bucks an acre. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, 500, $100 an acre. Exactly. So good for you, Kevin. You're doing it right. And I'm glad the offers are getting accepted. And no, this doesn't scare me at all. Does mm-hmm. it scare you? Not at all. So there's, there's pros and cons, just like with an HOA where you're, you know, with a house, with a residential where, where you live. You know, there's a real good, you know, for subdivisions that are heavy on HOA, the, the pros are, you know, they're not, there's not somebody doesn't have a, con, a camper across the street in the mm-hmm. in the uh, driveway and, all day, and eight eight you know eight feet foot long weeds and overgrown things like that. It's maintained. Somebody's taking care of stuff. Yeah. So and the like con, and the cons are in general you're regulated. <laughs> Somebody's watching you. So for some personalities they love it. For some personalities they really want to bang on the uh, something in the garage all day and night. So mm-hmm. uh, there's but you know it's like anything else. That person that wants that type of property is going to find it if mm-hmm. the price is right. So, um, no, I would buy property buy away. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, it doesn't scare me at all. It's a very different buyer. No, yeah, no, and you know it will be. And you're just you know how to do this right, Kevin. You're going to be posting this all over the planet, on on and reach. You will reach that person. It's it's no different from the person that wants the lakefront to the person that wants the treed you know, not on the lake because it gets cold. Who knows? I mean, there's a little bit, there's little nuances of things that people want. And I stopped a long time ago guessing. Yeah. This is, this is one of those things too, where, where you might, your own opinion might be stepping into it and you kind of sometimes just have to get out of your own way, you know, because but it's a good question. Yeah. It's a great question. Do I need to be worried about this? Nah, is it going to take me longer? Probably not. It's probably going to be just fine. You're going to reach this. You're going to reach them. We have, we have, uh, you know, we have customers who, contact us regularly seeking out property with no access so um th- that's to the, in my opinion that's the end of the end so do we go out seeking property for with no access no we don't but when it comes across our desk and it's pretty uh, strong acquisition candidate we think twice that's true i'm not if you're brand new at this you shouldn't buy property with no access at all but if somebody's asking you hey i really want to buy some property and full disclosure and the whole thing that's a good idea but Hey, if you have a question or you want to be on the show, reach out to either one of us on landacademy.com. What a weekend, Jill. Oh, yeah. It's the weekend after Christmas. Yay. I mean, it's the day Mon- after Christmas. Monday after Christmas, yeah. Monday after, day after. Did you have Yay. a good one? I had a great Christmas. How about you? Excellent. Yep. What'd you get? Well, I'm holding one of my toys <laughs> right now. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways I could take that. Up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Uh, now I'm holding my, my nice new, um, tablet here. I'm having a really good time with it. So it's the rockin' iPad pro and I'm having a whole lot of fun. That's great. <laughs> I can tell there's a big smile on your face. I know. I'm like, I'm playing and I'm playing with all these little tools and things. It's really silly, but I'm using it for our show. Yeah. So how about you, Jack? I got a little, uh, this little cylinder thing where you can ask any question on the planet. <gasps> What's this thing called that you got me? Google home. 
Yeah, it's called Google Home. You just ask a question. So I figured we'd have it on the show today and ask about back tax property and stuff and see what she says. I think it's a great, <laughs> great idea. <laughs> Today's show is, uh, and this is the me the show, the truth about back tax property. You know, we hear this all the time. You should only mail offers to people with back tax, people with property that uh, have ba- associated delinquent back taxes. taxes. Delinquent properties. Or properties that mm-hmm. are pre-foreclosure or properties that are, that are, you know, where their owner is in trouble and on and on and on. And if you've listened to even one episode of this show before this, you know that Jill and I disagree with that. Mm-hmm. We believe you should mail every property that doesn't have any type of uh, mortgage on it. Yep. Whether or not they're current. Well, let's see what she says about the definition of property taxes. Okay, Google. What are property taxes? According to Wikipedia, a property tax is a levy on property that the owner is required to pay. The tax is levied by the governing authority of the jurisdiction in which the property is located. It may be paid to a national government, a federated state, a county or geographical region, or of a municipality. This is this is made this for is, me. This is totally this. Is, <laughs> this has been my world for the last twenty four hours. Let me just pause for a moment here. And as you can see, it does not leave his side. So, oh my goodness, I'm smarter. I'm so oh, much smarter than I was twenty four hours ago. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> as if it wasn't bad enough with your cell phone. Now it's just that much easier. And I swear that there's so. I don't know this that thing is pretty smart we've been we've been having a good time with it I was asking what was it I asking oh I was asking about counties and things today it's just yeah what was your question about counties today go for it here it goes there we go okay okay Google how many counties are there in the United States According to Wikipedia, as of 2013, there were 3,007 counties, 64 parishes, 19 organized boroughs, 11 census areas, 41 independent cities, and the District of Columbia for a total of 3,143 counties and county equivalents in the United States. Okay, well, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. Jeez, that's a whole <laughs> lot. Well, here's what's funny. So I did a follow-up question. This is this is really good. I'm not going to... Do you want me to do the follow-up question? Oh, no, I'll just, just tell, tell you. Yeah. So the follow-up question was, all right, then how many properties are there? And I and, and no matter how I asked the question, yeah. I even asked SFRs. I was asking, so Google can't get, can't get it. It's just... And it was funny because, Jack, you're staring at me going, I know that because I've tried to do this too. The number's too high. <laughs> well, yeah, I've searched every corner of Google to try to figure out um, if there's a source, one single source. A reliable source. For how many properties there are, how many APNs there are in the country, the whole thing. So, And I, and I cannot find it. So well, right. what do we do when that happens? We create our own. Exactly. <laughs> so I am working on that. Actually, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. This is finite. Geography is finite. There's a finite number of APNs based, broken down by county in this country. Except the only, for the parcels that we split and make more. Yeah, so there's the only reason that's yeah. exactly, Joe. So the only reason they're, they're, that number will change is when people create new subdivisions. And yeah. that happens, but it's pretty trackable. You know, they have to do public notice for all that. Mm-hmm. Or when they take properties and consolidate them. You see that with agriculture a lot for some reason. Right. You take 15, 40-acre properties and make it one parcel. If you talk to developers, they love doing that, but we don't. Mm-hmm. So it, it depends on what you, how you're going to use the property. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Today's topic is the truth about back tax property. Today's topic is okay, Google. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she turned on. Sorry. Whoops. Sorry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that was going to happen. Maybe she should be a permanent guest on the show. No, I know. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Yeah. Maybe mm. she could just replace us all together. That now we're talking. <laughs> Today, on today's show, Google and I discuss. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Google just replaced me. Okay, Google. Would you like to be our radio show guest permanently? Sorry, I'm not sure how to help. Yeah, that's exactly. That's right. Human beings can still, we still have to rule. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes I'm not sure how to help. <laughs> 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 All right, so the truth about back tax properties is this. When you mail just back tax properties, and believe me, we... In our in our net, and when we cast a net out there to find uh, buyers, willing, really seriously willing, uh, I mean sellers, we f- we cast that net over the back tax property too. So it comes in with all the mail, with the offers we send out, and guess what? The properties that come back that have associated back taxes are very problematic. Mm-hmm. You might get ten properties 
in that have associated back taxes and pretty serious ones sometimes uh, and great deals, but there's problems. Mm -hmm. So the thick of it is this. Back tax properties, here's the truth. They're problematic. They're problematic to purchase. They usually have other liens besides. It's a huge sign that there's problems. For me, it's a red flag. So, I mean, what do you think, Jill? Yeah, I agree. I was just like, I just checked on from my little tablet. <laughs> I wrote down three things about stupid back tax properties. And I'm sorry, just like, I just don't want to focus on them. It's a waste of time. I know so many people that have tested this theory and really gone out and done mailers and focus only on back tax, not kidding, and, and then everything else. And they came back and said, wow, I, I you know, like they're eating their words. They're saying, you're right. I just proved myself wrong. Um, I had a better ROI, I had better properties, I had easier to transfer, I had, you know, I didn't have to deal with all of these issues. So, so here's, here's my thing. I mean, yeah, there, there, there's often a reason why there's always, there's a problem. Um, it's like you and I, Jack, those two homes along the, there's two homes in La Jolla Cove that have been sitting there for 30 or 40 years. And Jack, you know what I'm talking about. And, uh. There's, they're obviously tied up in something, but anyone, any person would drive along, like a flipper would drive along and go, oh, there's a diamond. I'm going to find they're, out who owns it and I'm going to get those. Yeah, they're falling down, but they've, and they've been in that way for they years. They should be con- condemned, actually. I think they are condemned. No one can go in there. There's, it's all boarded up. They're all boarded up on the, some of the most expensive real estate on the planet. And there's a problem. You shouldn't be mailing them. You shouldn't be spending your time on them. You shouldn't be doing it. There is something going on there if it's that long. So... I say number one, they're a problem. Two, they're hard to weed out. Two, if you really want to just focus on that, again, why? You're just wasting time. And three, transfer issues. Those are That's the real issue. Mm-hmm. Go, I mean, here's what's what lures people into just mailing offers to back tax property. It's cheaper, right? So in the universe of property, let's say you go to any given county and you sort uh, through a database and you find all the, the five-acre properties that you fit, feel like you want to send offers to. And then for, let's say it's four or 5,000, right? Mm-hmm. Then you take the back tax properties only within that. And then now it's, you know, 10 or 15%. It's a lot cheaper to send a mailer out to get to that, to, to get a yield. Uh, you know, it's just cheaper. The postage is cheaper. And I think it gets, it lures people in. Wait, what do you, well, the postage is the same no matter who I'm spending a mailer to. So I'm not sure what you mean. I'm sorry. In the universe, how we do it is this: we we take we choose a county, and let's say we choose five acre properties, and then we scrub the data down for the people that we don't want to send it to, like the U.S. government. So now we have this universe of five acre properties with no debt on it, and we're not and we're only sending it to people that we think will might respond. Right. From there, all right. Let's say there's a thousand properties. Right. From there, there might be only a hundred and fifty properties that mm. have associated back taxes. Right. It's a lot cheaper to send 150 mail, mailer units out than 1,000. Oh, to weed them out and then only yeah. hit those people. And I can tell you, I guarantee it, you will get a response. You'll get a ton of responses from that 150 unit mailer and you won't buy anything. Uh-uh. You'll be wasting your time. You're... And that's that's why it's. <sighs> I think it, it, it lures people in. Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to get calls back from people that say, yeah, I'll take it. And then you go do your homework and you go, oh, no wonder he wanted $500 because he owes $800 in back taxes. Or 8000 Yeah, now it, now it doesn't. Now the deal's no good. Now I'm out, you know, kind of thing. And I've heard, well, here's and here's my other thing. I've heard other people, McGlinky, we talked about, saying, just offer him a dollar and just do that. I'm not going to waste my time on that, too. I had a call with somebody. We talked about that. I'm not going to offer someone a dollar and waste my time it's and their time. It's disrespectful, too. Yeah. They're not going to be excited waiting for the notary to show up for a check for a dollar. No. I, I just move on. You know, it's not worth my time, and, and I feel bad for them, but... I need to be spending my effort and my energy on really good deals. You know, if you want to get a ton of people to call you back trying to sell their property to you, do this. Mail out a bunch of postcards that says, uh, Dear resident, we would love to talk to you about selling your property. You'll get a million people calling you back and you won't buy a darn thing. You're going to get a million people calling you to uh, try to negotiate a deal. At retail, top dollar. <laughs> yeah. Because they, you know, they think that they think you this. zeroed I've in on their home, yeah. right? And they want, oh, they love our home and they love the view and it's so great. They're going to pay for it. They don't know. And that's, yeah, that wastes your time. That's, that's, 
That's what? one of my big things is the time the time that you're putting in here. You know, and that's if, if I'm going to spend 10 hours a week on this, I'm going to spend 10 hours a week on the right stuff, not spinning my wheels on one property, you know, that I think is good or whatever. So here's the thing, and we've said it a million times to kind of wrap this topic up. You're you're searching and looking for a situation, okay? You're not looking for a, a piece of real estate. That comes later. Mm-hmm. You're looking for a property. Uh, here's my wish list. Here's my dream acquisition. I would love to buy a large acreage property that has great access uh, for about a hundred bucks an acre or so. So let's say let's say a forty acre property for about three or four thousand bucks that has great access, but then that's great. That's all the pro- that's the property details. More than that, what I would love is to have a seller call me back and say, "I'm the owner." Uh, you know, I I, th- I got your offer and I thought about it. I talked to my husband or my wife. We would, you know, we, we would love to do this deal with you. There's no back tax properties on it. There's no issues at all. But we just, we talked about it and we're never going to use this property. We bought it 15 years ago, kept up on the taxes, some stuff changed. And yeah, let's just get this out of our life. I don't want to receive the tax bills anymore. That is what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for trying to make a deal complicated, mm-hmm. which is what back tax properties are. You know, and I, I'll take a substandard piece of actual real estate, but with the situation that I just described versus a perfect piece of property with a massive problematic situation to try to get it closed. Bingo. So. I was going to add one, one yeah. little thing for me, though. It's not that I'm not going to buy these, by the way. When we do our mailers, when you, um, and these calls are coming back, um, I, I I just I just do my homework on them. They very well might have back taxes on them, and that doesn't scare me. Right. So I just don't seek those only out, and and I do know I look it up and I make sure and I confirm with the county. All right, I, I was going to offer eight hundred maybe. Now I'm down to seven hundred or six hundred because they have X amount of back taxes, and I and I let the I let the seller know that, and they say, you know, and that's a that's a negotiation a negotiating tool that you could use later on. By the right. way. Say, hey, that tax bill that you're staring at that's due right now, don't pay it. I'll pay it. And let's just take $100 off and everybody's happy. And they'll go, heck yeah. Well said. Thanks. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to use information, that's me. And inspiration, that's me. To get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half of what it's worth and sell it immediately. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. <laughs> Good show, Jill. I'm going to ask this Google thing some funny stuff. I was just going to say the same thing. Okay, Google, what's your favorite podcast? Well, it's hard to pick a favorite. (laughs) How about ours? (laughs) Okay, Google, who is Jill DeWitt? Sorry, I'm not sure how to help. Wait, 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 Jill. Okay, Google, who is Jeff DeWitt? Sorry, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Google, who is Donald Trump? According to Wikipedia, Donald John Trump is an American politician, businessman, and television personality who is the president elect of the United States. Nice job. <laughs> okay, Google, I'm bored. I can fix that. We can write a Mad Lib story. I can find you a fun fact, or you can spin the wheel. What do you want to try? Find a fun fact about real estate. Sorry, I don't understand. Because real estate's not fun. It is fun. Okay, Google. <laughs> How do we become a real estate agent? According to Kaplan Real Estate Education, be at least 18 or 19 years old, have legal U.S. residency, complete your required pre-license education, pass your state <laughs> real estate license examination, where did she get that back? I don't know. That's hilarious. Okay, Google. How much money do real estate agents make every year? My apologies. I don't understand. Okay, Google. What's the average income of a real estate agent? According to workcron.com, Houston Chronicle. While Simply Hired reported salaries of $33,000 for first-year real estate sales agents in 2014, the average annual salary for all real estate sales agents was $51,934 as of May 2012, according to the BLS. 
So 50 grand, Joe. You know, we just had a member the other day put on Facebook that he made $46,000 in three transactions on the same in the day. the same day. The same guy. That was his profit. Hmm. Interesting. You know, it's so funny, and we'll leave it on this, that, I don't know, some stuff just makes sense, and some mm-hmm. stuff doesn't. And this business model just makes sense to me. It, it always does. has. And when our group is getting, we've got the people in the group now that I think they... They got it before they got to us. They just needed the last few pieces to the puzzle. Like, like uh, David, he was talking about. He mm-hmm. just closed all those deals. Mm-hmm. Bingo. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, and, Jill, and this, this was, was the Cash Flow from, from land, land Show. We are the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.